Well, hello, friends. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. I'm working all through the night to bring you the fine programming here at Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Do you like all four major sports and teams within all those four major sports? Well, you'll like www.steelflyers.com because it does all that. We've got new creators coming in, and you can do that part, be part of that too. I'll tell you what we're going to do here. We're going to do something called player comparisons. Yeah. Or would you or would you not? So I'm going to give you two players. And you are going to tell me if you would trade one player for the other or which player you would select if I were to give you those two players. You're going to put those down in the comment section. And... Uh, it was a lot of fun. We did it on my live stream on the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show, which if you subscribe right now, you can be part of that. I'll, I do stuff like that. We just, one of the, the uh, one of the members puts out two players and we all say which player we would choose if we were the one in the land doing that sort of thing. It's fun. You want to check it out. You want to subscribe, become part of the frolic. We did a lot of other stuff too. Who's the best coach in the league? Rating all the coaches in the league. Rating the forwards. Rating the defense. Go check out my other videos. You'll see how much fun it really is. You're going to love it. Okay. Let's get to it, shall we? Starting off with. Oops. Let me get over here. That's not what we're starting off with. We're starting off with Tyler Batuzzi. Or Connor Garland, would you take Tyler Bertuzzi, who was injured last year, he is 25 years old, 26 years old, uh, has been around the league a little longer, played in Detroit for, what do we got here, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five seasons already. Um, like I said, he was injured last year, only got in nine games. Did get seven points in those nine games. Um, but before that, he's averaged about 48 points a game. I think as Detroit gets better, Bertuzzi still got upside to get better as well. Um, and then Connor Garland. Late bloomer Connor Garland. Uh, has played a couple seasons. He's 25. He's a year younger. We're not really going by contracts here, although I might make a comment on it here and there. They're both making the same amount of money here, though, in this case. Um, really had a breakout season last year, but I'm telling you, but people love the guy. Uh, so much so that it was very close, but Tyler Bertuzzi did edge it out. Tell me what you would you take Bertuzzi or Connor Garland. I, I actually had a talk. I like Bertuzzi's game. I love his shot. I, I really think if he played on a on a more productive team, he would get more points. But Connor Garland, this year and last year, played the type of game that everybody loves. Just a hard not nosed uh, get into the, especially for small players. He's not that big. He's only 5'10", but he plays way bigger. Uh, he, it's, uh, he's got a lot of courage, man. He's not afraid to go anywhere. And people love it. And he got quite a few votes. But in the end, Tyler Bertuzzi, who isn't really afraid either. Um, he doesn't really back down from anybody as well. He just doesn't have that scrappiness, you know, of uh, Connor Garland. Uh, Connor Garland's just a guy that everybody just love, would love to have. Uh, next, so tell me what it is between those two. Next, we have Dustin Brown from the Los Angeles Kings or Patrick Hornquist from the Florida Panthers now. Now, I bet you if you did this last year or the year before in, with Hornquist in Pittsburgh, it would have been Brown all day. Um Brown is older, 36 years old. But they again, these guys, they both play the same type of game. Brown has been a captain on this team before. And 
he puts up, uh, he gets a lot of crap, Brown. I think because he's got a fairly significant contract. At, so is it, $5.8 million a year? But he actually kind of lives up to that contract. He has 61 points, 51 points, 31 points in 49 games last year. That ain't that bad, especially for a 36-year-old with the type of game. He, I mean, he leaves it on. He leaves it all out on the ice. No, nobody cares more than Brown. But Patrick Hornquist does the same thing. The problem is with Hornquist is he hasn't really had the point production of late. He did earlier on his career. He had some 51 point seasons in Nashville and his first couple of years in Pittsburgh. But he tailed off, you know, quite a bit to 37 points and then 32 points in 2019-20. But he had a crushing year last year. In the end, the group on the live stream, which you can be part of if you subscribe, you can be part of it if you don't actually, but you'll get the notification if you do. They took Hornquist over Brown here. What would you say, fans of hockey and possibly LA fans, would you take Brown over Hornquist? Now, also, I didn't even realize this until we did this actually. Hornquist is actually two years younger. I would, that's why I took him. It was more because of his youth, youthfulness. Uh, salary wise, they're about the same. So I took him because he was younger, but it was not easy. It was not easy to pick between the two. Next, we have Brandon Sod of now the St. Louis Blues. The last year played for Colorado. He's won. Oh, by the way, Brown also, Hornquist and Brown have both won cups, I believe. I believe he won one, but Brown's won more. So. Here, Saad has won cups with Chicago. I believe he won. Was he there for all three? I think he was there for all three. Um, and uh, he puts up some decent points. His salary is a little. It's five million. What's he getting now? Yeah, an average of four and a half. Not too bad. Um, but he's been up and down, up and down. He's kind of like a, a good second line winger. And, uh, you know, it consistently puts up 40 to 55 points, somewhere around there. But the other one we were, would be Alex Kalorn, who I believe, what, Saad is actually re, re younger than most people, with, is only 28 years old. Kalorn is 32. Did you ever, did you think that with how long Saad's been in the league, that he was only 28 years old? And Kalorn is actually older because it doesn't seem like Kalorn has been in the league quite as much, quite as long. Um, but 343 points, one of those consistent guys right around the 20. They're, they're very similar to each other. That's why we do this. Try to find which one is more similar. I, I went with Saad because he was younger, but I got crushed. Kalorn got Everybody pick Kalorn. What do you think? I, uh, 32 year old Kalorn or a 28 year old Sod? It's one cups. Um, Kalorn had a really good playoffs this last year, though. So I think that has, that sticks in the memory of people as well. But uh, interesting. Tell me what you would pick there. Next, uh, while wow, Brett Pishy, Pesci or Brodeen. That Jonas Brodeen or Pesci. That is really, really tough if you ask me. Um, I, Pesci, Pesci's worked on his offense the last little while. 25 points in 55 games last year. Um, I'd say you get a little more offense out of Pesci. He's only 26 years old. Jonas Brodeen is 28. He's a little older. But he's, they're both so solid defensively. Um, I think Brodeen's going to get a chance to put up some, so a little more offense this year, though, with uh, Suter being gone. Um, I think they're going to use him in more offensive situations, and it may sway my vote. But for now, I'm going for the younger Pesci. I like, you know, you're going to have him for longer. 
But honestly, I'd be happy with both of these guys on my team. They're the great shutdown defensemen. It was an awesome pick by our members for one of those two. What do you guys take? Pesci or Brodeen? Next, Demko or Igor Shosturkin? And, and this really surprised me. Demko is 25. Shosturkin is 25. They're both the same age. I was all over Shosturkin, and I love Demko. I think Demko is going to be is going to have probably one Vesna in his cupboard before it's all over. Um, his numbers last year were not the greatest, but we got some pretty wild, good members there that know their hockey, and uh, they took Demko by a landslide. However, I think Igor Shosturkin is going to absolutely be beast it next year. Um, the thing about him is he hasn't played as much. He's, most of his time has been in the KHL. Look at these KHL numbers, though. 1.90, 1.46. Now, that doesn't really factor in to, uh, you know, which one you're going to choose is what they do in the NHL more than anything. But I, I think Shesterkin just has this something special. Almost Dominic Hasek like. Um, Demko is a big, solid goaltender. Can move really well. Kind of reminds me of Bishop. Um, but it was it wasn't easy. But I, I just think Shesterkin's going to crush a little more than Demko in his career. Tell me what you guys think. Uh, next. Here, come on my live and tell me what you think. We got Ropo Hints. Or Matthew Barzal. And I was a little surprised by this one. Barzal, 24 years old. Hints is 24 years old. Both the same age, too. Um, Barzal has not really ever put up more than uh, a point of game. Ropo Hints did have his point of game year last year, I believe. Yeah, over, just over a point of game last year. But I thought that Matthew Barzal's body of work over a little bit of longer period of time would have possibly won over everybody here, but they did not. We went with Ropo Hints over Barzal. Um, I, however, I did take Ropo hints. I think this year he's going to absolutely crush it. It was very difficult, though, because I think Ropo hints had a little more to play with than Barzal. I think that gets underplayed in New York, that Barzal doesn't have very creative players to play with. And if he did, I think he would put up a lot more points than he did. It wasn't easy. It wasn't an easy decision at all. I liked Ropo's size a little better, too, and he plays a little bigger. Um, that would be the main reason, I think, for everybody, really, picking hints over bars all there. Uh, next, we have Drake Batherson or Dominic Kubelik from the Chicago Blackhawks, from the Ottawa Senators. I love Batherson. I so, I've been talking about – I've been uh, tooting – Batherson's horn from way back in 2018-19 when I first saw him on the ice. His intensity and his not his uh, uh, IQ, seemingly high I, uh, IQ for the game. And I'm like, this guy's going to be really, really good. Um, Kubelik came out of nowhere and uh, ended up potting 30 goals 2019-20. Wasn't off that pace too far last year either. And Kubelik got it. I took Batherson. I think Batherson has a more complete game. I love his intensity. I think he's got greater upside uh, for his total game. But Kubelik, on the other hand, has got that killer shot. He's going to score more goals for you, plain and simple. And everybody likes the score of the goals, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's nothing wrong with that. Say whatever you want. Most of these, I you can make an argument for both, and I'll be like, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> it's back and forth. They were they were really good pickup picks here. 
Um, sticking with Chicago, we're going to go Peterson or Kane. And when I first heard this, I was like, well, that's kind of – Kane is – you know, Kane. Kane's going to be the best American of all time, probably by the time his career is over. Uh, 84 points in 70 games last year. But do you want a 32-year-old Kane? Or do you want a 22-year-old Pedersen who probably is going to have a 100-point season in his belt, under his belt? Before it's all said and done. I was I had a really tough one. Kane's defensive game has gone down quite a bit, um, and uh, it, like to the point where it's just really bad. Where Pedersen plays a two-way game. For me, it depends on what you're going for as a team. If you're win now, I guess you got to go Kane. His offense is just too sick right now. But for an overall franchise outlook, if you're looking for the future and everything, you got to go for Elias Pettersson. Uh, but Kane won in a, in a landslide. I really thought that maybe people might want Kane more, being the younger player that you're going to have for the longer amount of time. That being said, Kane actually is only 32 years old. He could still be crushing it for the next five or six years. So... Um, but like I said, defensively, he has weakened, gotten worse and worse every year for like the last two years. Is that going to get better as he gets older? I don't think so. Uh, next, we have John Tavares and Jonathan Taves. We're sticking to a whole lot of Chicago here. Jonathan, John Tav uh, Tavares or Taves? Tavares takes an absolute crap kicking in Toronto for their playoff not success. It especially hurts since the Islanders do so well, right? And you picked them up and all that. It, it does hurt, let's face it. You know, you probably know Toronto fans out there that, you know, they're pretty bitter. And really, it's hard not to be. You pick up Taves, or you pick up Taves, you pick up Tavares, he, got, he had 50 points. He's like a point-of-game center. And he's still got a lot of legs left, even though he still looks like he's got a lot of legs left, even though he's 30 years old. He's not that old. Where you, Then you, again, we're back to that, do you want an older Taze who has crushed it in the I, – I have a feeling Toronto Maple Leafs would do this trade. Because they so want a playoff guy. Taze has won three cups. He's been he's gonna go down as one of the greatest leaders of all time. He still puts up decent points. We'll see what he does after his injury last year, but he doesn't put up as many points as uh as Tavares anymore. But he plays really tough minutes. Like he plays against the top, other team's top line. As much as possible. Is that the same for Tavares? He, he, he does play against the other team's top line quite a bit. It was difficult here. I, I still kind of lean to Tavares. I know he can do it. I know John Tavares is not his quote, quote, fault that Toronto hasn't performed in the playoffs. Give, give, put Tavares in those teams that Taves had. In Chicago, you think they still win the cup? I do. But it was, you know, like, this is one of those cases where you can make a really good case for both. I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't bemoan any Toronto fan for wanting Taves with all his playoff success and how great of a leader he is either. I, not at all. I, um, so anyways, we're sticking to Tavares here. And we're going with a guy with a less of a playoff pedigree but has won a cup. In O'Reilly, would you take Toronto fans or any fans out there, Taves, would you take Tavares, or I'm getting them all mixed up, Tavares over O'Reilly, who almost put up a point a game last year. Um, I, again, stuck with Tavares. I still think Tavares is a great, great player, but 
Uh, by the way, Tavares won against Taze. And against O'Reilly, they took O'Reilly. It's funny. People took Tavares, uh, took Tavares over Taze, but O'Reilly over Tavares. I took Tavares on both. Both, boys and girls, I did both. Tell me what you think there in the comments section. Okay, uh, next. Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, we have Alex Tuck or Timu Meyer. I absolutely love Tuck. I love his size. I love everything about him. This was a really difficult one for me, actually. Um, it, Tuck won it four to three. Tuck won it forty to thirty or whatever it is. People like Tuck. I think Meyer kind of wallows in San Jose there and had not a superb year the last two years, and that kind of hurt him. Overall, I think most people would agree that Meyer has the kind of talent that can definitely be better than Tuck, certainly offensively. But we all love the big guys that grind it out and have speed to burn, right? Like, I love the way Tuck takes the puck to the net. Love it, love it, love it. But that being said, one it will only take one year for Timo Meyer to, to change everybody's mind because that kid guy has got talent coming out of his yin yang. He is a beast, and uh, he just hasn't been able to show it in San Jose. Things haven't been going for him well there. So, anyways, that is my full forty-two boys and girls. That's all I have to give. We have we're going to be doing this again. I'm going to see how this well this does. See if everybody likes it. Hit that like button. Sub sub yourself up. Come on to my live, and we'll be doing way way more of this. Let's try to get. 20 likes, 20 likes, 20 likes. We smash that like button 20 times and I'll be sure to rock these videos even harder, man, harder. I'll be rocking it like you wouldn't want to believe. Hit the sub button, I'll send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace right to your door. And uh, Perlocopter, of course, by, by Hernandez or Melissa. They'll bring them over to you. And send your letters. We love your letters. Oh, we love your letters for days. Send them all. And uh, hockey season's coming up, so I'm going to Perlo dance you out of the environment. That's right. Good old Perlo dance right at you. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.